Good day doodlers, welcome on back to Draw Cartoons. Today I'm going to be covering how to draw a walking pose. This will apply to pretty much any cartoon character that you want to draw, whether they're anime style or inspired by Disney or any other kind of popular animation style. The principle's pretty similar overall. In this video, like all of my videos, I've dropped some really, really great hints as I work, so don't skip around, otherwise you will miss the best tips. If you do enjoy this video, you'd be doing me a great, huge favor if you like and subscribe to the channel, and that way you'll catch more videos just like this one. All right then, let's go. So your starting point with this particular tutorial uh, kind of depends on the anatomy of the character that you want to draw, but generally the principle is the same. I always like to start with a head and then use that to kind of measure how tall I want my character to be. So here's a circle for the head, it's very basic, but that's fine. We usually start with some kind of oval shape for the head. And then I'm going to draw a line straight down 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 to more or less where I want the floor to be now this can be kind of hard to uh, ascertain to begin with but generally I mean if you look at this how many heads height is that that's one head you imagine another one here two three it's like four heads in height more or less it doesn't have to be precise I mean this one over here you can see it's more like three heads in height you have made the head way bigger it's like two and a half actually so you can start with pretty much any size head you want and then draw a line down to more or less what feels right for you and you can just experiment with that over and over again so with this character on this side here they're still very cartoony not not quite as like you know Disney-esque as this one with a huge head over here uh, but we're going to start with this one over here. So I've drawn this line straight down and then more or less in the midpoint between here where the neck starts and the floor, you want to draw a small notch like that. And that is, as you can see, it's where the waist is. This is pretty much where the legs begin. So I think a good starting point is to get the torso out of the way. I'll draw a small couple of lines for the neck. Let's give that back a bit of a concave curve. Very, very typical of cartoons to have this. And you're basically going to draw a bean shape, you know, like any kind of kidney bean or even a baked bean that's a bit wobbly. You know, just kind of go for this shape here. This is the posterior, this is the upper back, and that is the small of your back. That's where it kind of curves in. This character's maybe got a bit of a belly. If you want, you can trim that in. That's totally up to you. And now this is where it gets interesting. When you walk, something very important to remember is that if your right leg, in this example, if your right leg is going forward, then your right arm is going backwards. It alternates. If you walk and film yourself or look at yourself in a mirror as you do it naturally, you'll see to counterbalance your legs movements, your arms move in the opposite direction. So your left arm goes forward when your right leg goes forward and your right arm goes forward and your left leg goes forward. Right now the left leg is back so the right arm is back. It's alternating and if you watch yourself do it in a mirror it'll make a lot more sense. Um, we are our own best references <laughs> when it comes to drawing people. But for now I'm going to go ahead and draw just just lots of small sketchy lines down until I reach the floor. All right, that's, that, that's my floor. I labeled this floor on the example below. I'm going to do it again so it makes a bit more sense. This is your heel. The heel strikes the floor. Most people walk in a heel toe sort of pattern. And then as, I, as the heel strikes the floor, I'm going to flick it up into the shape of a foot. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a small example. I like to make it a bit narrow at the end because, you know, that's more or less the shape feet are, especially if you're wearing shoes or boots or something, you know, if, if it helps you visualize it has some boots or something like that. <laughs> um, and the other leg needs to be going backwards, it's not going to be going forwards, you know, they're going to just land from a long jump or something like that if you do that. So the other leg is actually going to be more like this, we're going to go back, we're going to curve, and this time the heel is going to end about here. We need room for the foot because the toe, this time the toes, they are what is touching the floor. So I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to form a bit of a folding shape here. Like that. That's quite important to have this dent here. Because again, if you look at yourself in a mirror and you walk past the mirror, watch what your feet do. You are doing this heel toe motion. And that is very important in portraying a character that's walking. So I'm going to draw this back up here. Uh, notice, by the way, I've drawn the thigh thicker than I've drawn the ankle. It's very, very subtle in difference, but it's there. Um, and these small, subtle differences make all the difference when it comes to drawing characters. Just going to make that symmetrical. Draw the, the tops of the boots, because why not? So get that fold in there so it looks like all the pressure is on the, uh, the toes here. 
and the pressure is about to be on this heel, but it's not quite. It's, it's just landed, right? It's just landed. So now, which arm is going to be forward and which arm is going to be back? Well, the way I've drawn this, the, the right leg, this character's right leg, whoever they are, is the one that's forward. So which one's going to be back? That's right, it's going to be the right one. The right arm is back because the right leg is forward. So I'm going to draw a small circle here just to help me picture the shoulder. So you can start really with just a, you know, stick man kind of shape like that. I like to exaggerate it, bring it right back. I mean, if you're walking in real life, your arm is never going to go that far back unless you're sprinting. It, you, your arm would be like down here or something like that. But this is a cartoon and we really, really like to exaggerate. I'm going to uh, embarrass myself and spell this wrong probably. No, I managed to do it right. I'm pretty sure there's two G's there. At the, at the end of this arm, we're going to draw a little block. That's our hand. And just draw a little nub there for the, for the thumb. And then all we have to do is flesh this out. So I'm going to draw some lines either side of the stick shape that we drew, just to give the arm a bit of shape. Again, I've done the same thing that I did with the leg. I've made it thicker at the shoulder and thinner at the wrist. Again, very, very subtle. It's not like a carrot like that. It's more of a kind of, it's slowly beginning to converge. It's a very subtle difference, but you will, uh, you will familiarize yourself with that as you draw more, assuming you're a beginner. <laughs> um, so there we go. I'm just going to kind of flesh out the, um, the flow of the arm into the hand there. Again, this isn't a, this isn't a hand tutorial, so I'm not going to spend too much hand getting uh, too much time getting the hands perfect. But I should probably get my speech perfect at some point. <laughs> so with the other arm, I'm going to have this one going in front of him, and I'm going to have an elbow that comes down and an arm that comes up to about here, more or less chest height. I mean, really, if you wanted to, you can have the arm going up here, really going for a swing. Maybe they're waving at someone, right? But in this particular example, I'm just going to have a a kind of exaggerated walking cycle. I'm going to match those arms uh, shapes up to the wrist here. And notice how this, these lines meet up. The end of this hand meets up and the end of this arm meets up into a kind of like a flush, kind of like a flush shape. That's another really good tip for drawing hands in a very simple kind of straightforward way is to um, have the, I guess, uh, where the pinky finger would be, this part of the arm, this part of the hand, kind of link up in a straight line almost it's not perfect if you if you look at your real life hand it's not really that flush but in cartoons you can kind of get away with it um so that's that's, that's an easy way to draw that and then this part juts out a bit because the thumbs there you can afford to exaggerate it and have have this angle going on here if you can see that so now you can pick a direction that your character is going to be looking for example, I'm going to tilt it back so it looks like they've got something to whistle about, you know, whistle while you while you walk or something like that. <laughs> so now for the other example, this is going to be the same thing. and I'm just doing it again a second time to help kind of cement this idea that the principle is the same. Um, it's just the only real kind of like changing factor here is the anatomy of the character. This character is not as tall as this character, at least they shouldn't be. This character is meant to be smaller, but I've drawn them bigger just because it's a bit easier to depict what I'm doing here. This character in reality will probably be about this tall. So I'm going to draw the line down again, and this time I'm going to draw the floor again at the same level as the previous drawing, but we've got less room to work with here. This guy's, you know, everything below his head is taking up that much room. Everything below this guy's head taking up that much room. We've got less room to work with, but again, we just apply the same principles. You want to identify the midpoint between here and here, which is eh, it's probably about there. And that's going to be more or less where the legs start, maybe slightly lower than that. Um, it's generally quite flexible. As long as you start at the legs in that sort of area, you'll end up with a nicely balanced cartoon. It's going to draw some lines here for the neck. Again, a little bump out for the upper back, curve it in for the small of the back, and then curve it back out for the posterior. I'm going to draw this kidney bean shape now as I go back up toward the chest and end about here. Now I'm going to choose the right leg, our character's right leg, which is the nearer leg to us because our character's facing right, to have uh, this leg brought back. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to start by drawing a stick leg actually first and then I'll flesh it, flesh it out afterwards. I want to get the uh, anatomy right first. So here, I've just drawn that very quickly, but all I did, this is the thigh, this is the knee, that's where your leg bends, and that's the heel. The heel is raised again. Okay, I'm doing the same pose. That's the kind of underside of your foot, and that's the toes, they're all kind of wrinkled in. So with that in mind, I can start fleshing out the shape of this leg now. I'm going to make it really thick at the thighs, because this character's quite stout, so I'm going to give them quite a lot of weight on their uh, on their thighs. And then curve it. I'm actually going to give that heel a bit more curve, because why not? Okay. 
Apologies if you can hear my keyboard slapping away. I have uh, shortcuts on my keyboard that I like to use a lot. They help me work faster, so if you can hear that, I apologize. Um, so nice and thick at the thighs, and then quite narrow at the uh, at the heels here. So this one, this other leg's going to be coming out now. I'm going to give it less of a bend, actually. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make it quite straight and have the foot flicking up like this. Very, very Disney, very cartoony, very exaggerated. You could even bend this leg a bit like this. Very unrealistic, most people's legs don't really bend like that, but again, it's all part of the exaggeration and it will help you build, uh, well, a lot of personality in your character. So again, I'm going to have the thighs quite thick at the top where they join with the torso, and I'm going to have it narrow out as we approach the ankle slash heel of the character. And we can see we've got a nice kind of shape building up here, that again, this character's got quite a jaunty, quite jovial walk going on. So now I'm going to draw another circle in the middle across this line here for the shoulder. I'm going to decide where I want my arms. Do I, do I want the hand waving about up here? Do I want them kind of like, you know, down here, like they're having a, having a nice day? Uh, who knows? You can put your arms wherever you want. I'm going to have mine come up the same way as before. So now this time the right arm's going forward because the right leg's going back. And again, I'm going to just draw this elbow shape. Ends in a bit of a block. Add a bit of a nub for the, uh, the thumb on this side. Always remember what side the thumb is. I've seen so many people draw the thumb on the wrong side, and even I still do that to this day. Um, it's, sometimes it's quite difficult to remember exactly where the thumb should go. But uh, if in doubt, have a look at your own arms. Pose in front of a mirror, take a picture of yourself. Uh, that kind of stuff always tends to work for me. So I'm going to draw another little block here for the thumb. Okay, and then three fingers, two lines to show where they break up. And now all we have to do is flesh out the shape of the arm. So I'm going to make it nice and thick at the shoulder, narrow it out as I approach the elbow and the wrist. I'm going to do that same trick I mentioned before where these kind of join up. As a matter of fact, that's a bit thin actually. I'm going to thicken that out a bit. There we go. Experiment and find out what works for you. I'm always just kind of drawing things, hoping for the best. And then if they don't work, I, uh, I fix them as I work, as I just did then. I decided to have had, you know what, I'm going to fix it again. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna bring this out a bit more and bring it more flush with that. There we go. As a consequence, I need to make this bit move in a bit. There we go. So all I did there was I just decided I didn't like the way the forearm looked. I wanted it to match up with that side of the hand a bit more. So I just nudged things over a bit by just grabbing my eraser and nudging things until it worked. For me, at least worked in my eyes. So again, we can just draw a line across here just to kind of show, you know, as a character looking this way. Big nose pointing that way. Maybe I should give this person a face as well, why not? Bit of a smile. You know, you can, you can give them whatever you want now. But um, yeah, as you can see, the principle is the same. They have very different anatomies. This guy's got a much smaller head. It's still a big head. If you, if you saw someone walking around like this out on the street, you'd think, oh, that's quite, quite a big head on them. Not as, not as big as this one, though. But this is very kind of classic cartoony. Huge head. Um, very, very classic for cartoons to have that because that's where all the expression is, or at least it's where most of the expression is. Obviously, you express with your body as well, much like these guys are doing here. But that's going to be it for this particular one. Um, I'm actually going to get these inked and coloured in just to just kind of show you uh, what they what they look like when they're finished. Um, you should probably do the same uh, if you're working on a pencil and paper. You might want to grab a pen, go over them like that. If you're working on a computer like me, um, you want to start a new layer and finish them off. But for now, yeah, I'll see you in just a moment as I show you the finished products. So there we go. Who knows where this guy's off to, but he's having a wonderful day regardless. That tutorial probably wasn't the easiest one that I've done, but I do hope it was helpful, and obviously you can watch it again and again if you feel like you missed anything or need further practice. For now, we're going to have a quick look at some of the art that we've been provided with in the Discord. The community has been hard at work, so let's take a look at some of that. AMACD has produced this truly terrifying but extremely well detailed drawing of Nightmare Foxy from the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. That was a lot of Fs, more Fs than I can usually squeeze into a sentence. This one is looking fantastic, AMACD. I was tempted to save this one all the way up for Halloween. Bartez has produced a series of very colourful, very vibrant and very interesting looking drawings of a fox, a chicken and a yeti of sorts. These are wonderfully expressive, I absolutely adore the style that's going on here. Becca has drawn a baker, Becca, baker, very very similar there. I love this, look at that little cake. 
That cake is actually kind of big, now I think about it. I know I just called it small. It's kind of a big cake when you think about the size of the person holding it. And I love that. This is the kind of cartoonist expressionism that I really, really like to see. 25 inches, great job on this classic cartoon bird here. And Gamer Lord, look at this. This is for your YouTube channel? This absolutely rocks. Great work. Genesis drew this very abstract island or sort of a tree with a platform on the top. Whatever it is, I love it. There's so much detail kind of going on here. It doesn't even need colours, this one. There's just something to look at in every corner of the drawing. Not only that, but they also had a go at drawing Soul 22. And wow, just, just look at the way that came out. Great work. I like my chips soft and so do I, with, but with a crispy outside. Followed my tutorials on how to draw Baby Yoda and Cuphead. And look at those. If you've got any clear paper without lines on them, try and use that. But otherwise, these are just these are just fantastic. Perry, what can I say? I love donuts, first of all, so I feel like you've read my mind. But also the sketch of this head here, this is this just looks phenomenal. I can see you've used Procreate, which is an excellent drawing application. I'm not sponsored by or anything like that. It genuinely is great. If you have an iPad or an iPhone, I, I think it works on iPhone. It's really good. And this sketch is just superb. Something very 90s cartoon about this. Frog drew these Polaroid pictures of different landscapes. It's a little bit outside of what I've been covering so far in my tutorials, but I've got to say I love the way they've replicated the values and the shading in these backgrounds. These are fantastic. Shah is at it again with these bright colours and these fantastic character designs. This looks kind of like a ninja with a mask, or maybe they're just doing what everyone is expected to do at the moment. But whether they are or not, I love the design and the colours here. Great work as always, Shah. Speedwagon has some great Dragon Ball style art for us. I'm a sucker for this old stuff. I was really into Dragon Ball many years ago. And there's Cell. I remember Cell as well. These are just, these are just great. Thamadu drew a cartoon Wolverine and those colours are absolutely on point. This is very nostalgic. Many of you will remember this very old school kind of design for Wolverine's outfit. And Thamadu has really pulled it off here. Not only that, but Thamadu also worked on the Shrek tutorial that I made and has also been practicing their cartoon faces. I've got to say I love the work ethic. This is something I really approve of. Togion7176 has done this backdrop and wow, look at those blazing hot colours. I'm getting a bit sweaty and warm just looking at this one. Look at that. Very saturated with colours, very vibrant. And I just couldn't kind of keep my eyes away for a moment there. This is great. This one from ZD Productions really made me smile. There's something about the expression and the very triangular body type coupled with the gun aimed at the user. It just It just really kind of made me giggle. So this one's looking great. Well done. We also got treated to a egg villain and some very cool landscape studies by Barthez. Meanwhile, King Hamster has been kicking butt with this Samurai Rick. Look how that turned out. And Iman Rezu, which is username backwards, has given us an assortment. Look how busy they've been. An absolute assortment of very, very spooky art indeed. Just just soak this in. On the note of spooky, AMACD has also given us this spaceman with a halo and this very unsettling but really cool drawing. And to top it off, Zed has been drawing some traditional anime, which is looking great in my opinion. And Tom from the meme that we, <laughs> we all know quite well. That, that is looking really good. Speedwagon has also been working on some animations. I'm going to try and figure out a way to get these implemented in the next video. But let me tell you, the progress has been outstanding. And there we go. I absolutely love to see the stuff that you guys come up with in the Discord. Just just week by week, month by month, the improvement is phenomenal and I just love to see the practice. Join me next time. I'll be sure to be providing uh, lots of general kind of basics, fundamentals tutorials just like this one, as well as more specific ones of characters that you might like. But for now, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials just like this one. And I'll see you next time.